it's Don, the auction professor here. Today we're going to talk about vintage Christmas ornaments, a really great bolo item you should be looking for right now. Prices are going to steadily rise all the way up until fourth quarter, but let's go over there right now and look at some. Now here we are with Christmas ornaments. Now I just picked a selection, a random selection, just to give you an idea of the wide range and variety of these that do show up. Sometimes people don't even realize that they are Christmas ornaments. Some of the best ones, obviously, would be the earliest. This is a German Palmer Cox brownie. Palmer Cox did a ton of stuff. I have trade cards. There's books, Christmas cards, postcards. All kinds of items were made by Palmer Cox for the brownies. Even up into the 50s and 60s, you'll still find quite a bit of Palmer Cox items. I show them. I sell them. Look it up if you don't know who Palmer Cox is, but you're going to find items by him. Maybe you don't realize it. This is a good example of a character item, $452. This would have been made in Germany, hand-blown. Really a nice example here, 27 bids. Now, this one is Dresden, and Dresden is a location more than anything, but this is made out of, like, pressed paper. A typical example of what you would find. This is an excellent condition, probably one of the nicest pieces of Dresden Christmas I have seen. We'll show you a few other ones as well in this list, but this is something that many people may not even realize is a Christmas ornament just because of the way it looks. People think sometimes it, it's a toy or something along that line. They're well created. It's basically two pieces of pressed paper or cardboard that have been put together and you can see the seam down it as well too if you look closely on the belly of the animal. Now here's a grouping of ornaments. This is a prime example of the color and the uniqueness that really matter in some of these. You have atomic ones on the top. You've got characters. There's clowns, Santa Claus, buildings, musical instruments. Really nice example. This set here went for 375 bucks. Another thing to consider on these is this belongs together. All of the colors match. They're all from the same set. I wouldn't doubt for a minute that these were purchased in the same box just as you see them. Many times people will substitute some and it won't be the right one for the set when they were released and that can affect the value also on these. These are all blown glass, obviously, German, vintage. Some of them are indents as well. The two you see in the middle segment are indents. Indent Christmas glass ornaments always sell very well for us. Now here's another one. These are Premier. The silver metal part at the top where the connection piece goes are marked Premier. I've had similar ones also, but these are unsilvered. There is no silvering on the inside. One thing to worry about though on some of these is the silvering is done in the inside of the ornament after it's been made. So people can put chemicals in there and remove the silvering and then they market them as a higher type of ornament. So you do have to be careful. I don't know any surefire way to tell if it's been unsilvered because I have seen some that the silvering was removed. If you've had a lot of vintage Christmas ornaments, sometimes you can see where the inside coating has come off and you can see little clear specks of it. That's an example of how easy some of this stuff is to be removed, the silvering that is. So I'm always cautious when I see these, especially if they're wanting top dollar for them. But this does look to be a legit set, $325. Now here is a promotional set from Marshall Fields. May not know who Marshall Fields, the the company is. I believe it's out of Chicago, but the company has been around for a very long time. I've had trade cards from the 1870s with engraved images of the Marshall Field building in it. They've been around since at least 1870. They've made stuff for at least 100 years, I would say. This is a good example of some advertising pieces that they made. Uncle Mistletoe and Aunt Holly, glass early ornaments. Really nice examples. $322. Here's another unique one. Now, these are for feather trees. These would be small. They would be very lightweight, very, very thin glass ornaments. Very small indeed. A feather tree is a very light tree, very small, nimble branches. It's not full. It's not filled out like a modern Christmas tree. These went for some good money because of the shapes on these. You just don't see these shapes, these indented patterns like this, especially from the feather tree ones. So really nice example, $320 for this set of 12. 
Now here's another dress, and this is a horse and a jockey. He's made to be hung by the rope around the horse. This is a nice example. It's pressed as well, paper painted, has a little issues. You can see a leg that's damaged, but still $300. This is sports related, so it does garner a higher value. Now here's end of day. That's a pattern on these. It's a glass pattern. These are fairly heavyweight glass ones, interesting ones. Uh, foreign would be my guess as well from the nature of the pattern on the glass. $500. These are larger too. They're nine inches tall, which is pretty decent size for this type of ornament. Now here is a spun cotton. Now most people might think this is a toy, but if you look closely, it actually has string on the top where the loop was at one time. Dresden as well, Germany. Most of these fancy items were made in Germany. Dresden, again, is the source of a lot of these types of material. Even if it doesn't say that on it, most of these can be pulled back towards Dresden as the key location of creation on these, just because they were the powerhouse for all of these decorative items at the time. Glass, cotton, paper, whatever the case may be, Dresden was the source, including postcards and trade cards at one time. $395. Another spun cotton, running red fox, perfect example. He would have had a loop on the top. $295 on this one. They're stating Germany. There is no surefire way, but again, I would assume this was Germany too, just by looking at the construction. If you've seen a bunch of these, you'll realize the difference pretty easily. Now here is a clip on one. You can see the clip on the bottom. There's many that have clips on the bottom. A lot of them are for candles. Decoration wise were clipped on also for the ones that were on feather trees or even some of the newer trees. But this is an early one. It's double sided, meaning that the image is on both sides instead of just one. Back in the day, some of the cheaper ones would have only had an image on one side of the ornament. It was cheaper to design and, and produce as well. So $365 on this one. Here's a, a really super set here. These are unsilvered as well, but it has frosting around a rim. They look like lanterns or UFOs. That is a standard term I see used in a lot of these late 40s, early 50s, for sure, without a doubt on these original. And it lists mica in there. Mica would be the glitter you see on it. Now, mica is a stone, a real rock that's mined from the ground. Many people don't realize that, but a lot of these type of items, including cards and even postcards from, say, 1910, the glitter on it is not real glitter of modern day structure. It's stones that have been ground up. It's mica. It's mica rock that's been ground up. 280 on this one. Now, here's another one that a lot of people miss. These are plastic, 1950s and 60s. They spin in there from the heat of light setting next to them or in them. They'll spin. There's a bunch of different types of plastic ones. They all have the exact same color. So these yellows, oranges, and blues, there's a red one too. It's the same in almost every ornament that I have seen of this type. There's stars, there's geometric ones, there's dozens of different ones of plastic. They all go for some good money. So if you see plastic spinners, they're not going to have a hook necessarily. Some people confuse these with some of the vintage cat toys, believe it or not, because it has something that moves on the inside. These are really good items to get. Uh, something I would hop on in a second on these. Uh, and you can see the box. Twinkler is usually what I see them described as. They don't have to be a birdcage to be one of these. There's dozens and dozens of different plastic ones. $295. Even out of the box, doesn't matter. Even a couple single ones of these will still go for some decent money. Now here's a real early one, probably turn of the century. Merry Christmas, patriotic. I would say probably Germany too from the construction, the painting, the, the tone of the blue and the red. Really nice one, $235. This is a bigger one too, which is usually what you'll find from uh, German ones of this era. Figural ones are awesome. This is a Jesus blown glass. Most of these are blown glass. Whether they're blown into a mold or not, they're blown glass by hand. 500 for this one. Rare topic for some of these early glass ones, in all honesty. 
Now here is a set. Now some of these are a little scary because they make these new and act like they're old and they'll come in from the Ukraine or Russia. This one does look to be a vintage one. I could be wrong, but the construction on these looks far superior to some of the newer copies I've seen. $610, they're all named, it has Armstrong, the whole works on these. It's just a real nice example on these. The construction's just really unique. Now here's another set of blown glass ones, unsigned, very crude. If you looked at these closely, you'd see waviness and uh, where they've actually bent them. Things aren't exact. They're crude in, in general uh, aspect of these. The decorations like the red on the edge of the umbrella, it's just glue with more glitter or mica on them. Really unique set. Poland was another source of these after World War II, so you will run into these shortly after. I've seen uh, occupied Germany marked on some of these, and uh, Poland is marked on some of these as well. $586, 11 bids. Really nice example here. Now, Christopher Radko makes recreations of the vintage ones plus new ones made in the same style, the same blow mold style. These are mass-produced versions, though. Really unique, though. Mass-produced, though, means that they weren't necessarily hand-blown or hand-painted. Some of his are, though, so you have to dig into Radko. I'm including these in here just because they can be confused with some of the vintage ones all the time. Usually his are marked and have some deciding factors, whether it be the metal hook attachment on the top being a different color different construction or the character itself and obviously there wouldn't be any vintage disney beauty and the beast from the 30s and 40s so here's just another set of radco now they're recreating characters as well white christmas you should know from the 40s very popular christmas musical it plays on tv every single year 550 bucks. These are new, of course, but there are some vintage advertising ones that may have characters in them that are extremely scarce. So it's easy to confuse these with vintage and new. So anyway, now these are candy containers. They open up and you'd put candy in there and you'd buy them that way, but they were also ready and made to be hung from a tree. They have a string on most all of these. It's something they did a lot, and even to this day, you can find like M&M ornaments that you open them up, and there's M&Ms inside, and then you'd hang those from the tree. This has been a staple of the candy makers industry for at least 100 plus years. Really good example. It doesn't have to be made out of glass, obviously, as we saw the Dresden and the plastic. There's many other materials, just as the cotton spun were uh, another form of Christmas ornament. These are early, probably late 30s, early 40s as well. Now, Kugel is a killer name for these. This one went for over $2,000. These are extremely heavy, very, very thick glass. These are not fragile. You could drop these and they probably wouldn't break. They're so heavyweight. Very substantial pieces, large. This is more so than the, the standard one, which are usually big, giant nine-inch balls or, or in that range sometimes. This has decorations. It's a great cluster. They're not all priced like this, and this is an exception. It's a reddish pink tint to it, which is one of the most popular colors. 1950s pink Christmas ornaments go incredibly well. Pink has always been one of the sought after colors in most collectible fields, so. Here's just another early example, $600. It's squat, it's not as big, it's not fruit, it's not figural technically, it's just some oddball design so it didn't go for quite as much still a very nice example a christmas tree decked out with just kugel ornaments could be worth 50 grand 100 grand if it's full of kugel ornaments and people do collect enough to put trees together i have seen a few in my day so these are awesome ornaments usually not marked you just have to tell by the weight the construction is especially the mounting metal piece at the very top of them but that's what i have for you today well, there you are. Hopefully that gave you some ideas and some thoughts. If you enjoyed the video, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell a friend.